Explore the majestic Serengeti in Florida at Bush Gardens. Wherever the sun glows, wherever the wind blows. No more green and black holes. I think we're lost here, guy. We got a big choice to make, left or right. Welcome back to Expedition Weekly. On this week's episode, we'll be heading back to Bush Gardens, Florida, and taking a look at a gone but not forgotten attraction, Rhino Rally. To your left hand side. These are Anheuser bushes. Rhino Rally was a unique, one of a kind safari ride experience previously located at Bush Gardens, Tampa. The ride took around three years to build and opened on May 23rd, 2001 in the Nairobi section of the park. The attraction was a one-of-a-kind Vekoma Safari adventure and the only one ever created. The original experience itself lasted around eight minutes and was hugely popular on opening. With the wait times being so long, the park had to introduce a temporary express-style system which would allow the rider to return at a certain time and go to the front of the line. From 2010, the experience began as you entered the queue line, and you learned that you were going on a popular safari tour known as Rhino Rally. This was an annual racing event where the safari trucks must race against each other to the finish line. During the queue line, reports came in that a rally driver had become lost on the course named Scooter Roberts. The entrance featured a truck out front similar to the custom-built Land Rover trucks used in the attraction that could accommodate up to 17 people. As you boarded your truck, one guest would be chosen to be the navigator for the driver and got to sit up front with them. The navigator was instructed to look out for green and black poles which show the correct path through the experience. After departing, the voice of lost driver Scooter Roberts was heard, explaining he had been stranded on the course after his truck had broken down and that he had lost his water barrel, gas can and hat on the course providing a mini scavenger hunt for guests throughout the ride. The next section consisted of driving past various animals such as elephants and even alligators. Finally, the broken down truck would be discovered, complete with a help sign draped over the back. Occasionally, on very busy days in the park, an actor would actually be located at the truck and interact with guests. The driver would take the right path at the crossroad, returning to the finish line, and the ride ended. A short five minute attraction and a mere half of what it used to be. It actually wasn't always this way. Okay, all um, that. You guys can swim, right? From its opening in May 2001 until May 2010, the attraction would also not only have the safari experience, but a water attraction also. Oh, oh, oh. Where's those uh, green and black poles out there, Samantha? The, the green and black poles? You weren't looking for those, were you? Oh, gosh. So, uh, which way should we go? In the original version, after the crocodile scene and back on dry land, the safari driver noticed he could not find any more green poles to mark the way. Confused, the driver asked the chosen navigator which way to go, since the park split into left and right roads. Regardless of which path was chosen, the driver always went to the left path. After turning left inside a large rainforest, the truck would stop on a bridge right beside a huge waterfall. Originally, the ride featured an effect where the water would surge and break the bridge the truck was stopped on. The truck then proceeded to float down the river on a piece of the bridge before nearly falling down a waterfall. How this effect actually worked was that the bridge piece was fixed to a track similar to a roller coaster that was under the water, and it would be pulled down the river by a cable system also under the water. When the truck drove onto the bridge, there was a marker for the driver to let you know you were lined up correctly. A light hidden on the far side would indicate when you were in position on the breakaway platform. A mechanical section would lock onto the tires of the truck so it couldn't move when floating down the river. Once you reached the end of the floating section, these locks would release so you could drive off back onto solid land. The ride featured three active bridge trolleys, one loading, one floating down the river, and one unloading before returning to the start position on a short backstage section. Are so... So, 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 are not getting wet unless you're in the fourth row, please. The water section of the ride was played with problems, causing it to break down. It was a huge maintenance cost on not only the attraction, but the trucks themselves. Steven, will you look at this, buddy? Somebody has conveniently placed a road right here in front of us. What do you think? Should we go for it? When the water section was not operating back at the crossroads, the driver would take the right side path and the ride would end, the same as it did after 2010. 
After a few years of opening, the flash flood of water towards the bridge was removed and the bridge would just break by itself. In 2010, the water section of the ride was closed permanently. Leaked plans had shown that the new roller coaster coming to the park would occupy the area which housed the water section of the attraction. The replacement ride was announced as Cheetah Hut, an Intamin launch coaster that covers a huge section of the park running through the water sections of the removed Rhino Rally. Your hunt for adventure begins at Bush Gardens. Feel the spirit of the cheetah up close. Then feel its speed as you race zero to cheetah. Ride Cheetah Hunt only at Bush Gardens. Rhino Rally would continue to run the shorter version for five years, with the new scooter story, and a five minute long ride, a mere shell of what the ride once was. Busch Gardens confirmed reports that it would close permanently in January 2015, stating the area would be used for future development. Today though, in 2018, the remains of the station and track can still be seen sitting mostly abandoned at the back of the park. It's hard to describe the scale of this project. Cheetah Hunt has the biggest footprint of any attraction we've ever built, stretching from the historic monorail building across the Serengeti Plain to the outskirts of Rhino Rally and back. While Cheetah Hunt would actually become one of the best rides in the park and one of my favorites, I can't help but miss the original Rhino Rally. It was a great attraction which fit in well with the park's theme. The first time you rode it, it really was surprising when the truck started floating down the river. With the removal of the water section, I cannot say I'm sad that the remaining part of the attraction was closed. It was a poor portrayal of what Rhino Rally used to be. A fitting and fun attraction for the whole family. Thank you for watching this episode of Expedition Weekly. Did you ride Rhino Rally in any of its forms and did you think it was better than Kilimanjaro Safaris at Animal Kingdom? Make sure you let me know in the comments below and we will see you next time.